Okay, welcome everyone to our class tonight. And uh, uh, the, the theme of this class is on a middle game. And basically, as soon as you develop all your pieces and castle, what to do basically in a middle game idea. So here I'll show you uh, one of my latest games uh, about a middle game. So you can see uh, how I managed to uh, break through and win relatively quickly in this game, okay? So in this game, I'm playing with the white pieces against uh, a pretty strong player, 24, uh, 2400 player. So I play the move d4. And this is a move that I normally play. Uh, my opponent played d5. c4. Now he played e6. So at the moment, uh, it looks like he's going to play queen's gambit declined, but actually it can also switch. It could be something else, something different as well, like if he plays the move c6 later. So we don't know yet exactly the op It looks like it's going to be queen's gambit declined, but actually it can transpose to some other openings. So for example, if you play the move knight c3, now he has a couple of options. He can play the move c5. And if he plays the move c5, do you know this opening? What is the name of this opening here? Yes? The Tarash. Yes. This is going to be the Tarash defense. This is very interesting opening. Not very uh, uh, popular, but uh, you still white needs to know what to do against it. So that could be a Tarash, tarash defense. Um, and also, he can also play c6. This is another idea that set up the pyramid and uh, then later try to play f5 to get a stone wall structure. You, you see the structure? This is a, basically he's trying to play the stone wall. When you see his pawns are set up like this, this is the stone wall structure, okay? So there are a couple of options. It looks like it's gonna be queen's gambit declined, but it could be some other opening. So I was expecting him to play this move, but that's why I went knight f3 first. Knight f3 first, so if he plays c6, I have some additional options such as queen c2, e3, even knight bd2 is playable. Since I haven't developed my knight on c3, I have this option to go to on d2. So my opponent played knight f6, developing his knight, very normal move. So I played knight to c3, and here he has a couple of options here. He can play uh, c6, which is going to be which opening? Semislav. Semislav defense, yes. If he plays bishop e7, this is going to transpose to? So it's also good to, to get familiar, familiar with each opening. So this is queen's gambit declined, correct? That's another option. And if he takes on c4? Vienna, <laughs> Vienna, and now we come to what my opponent played here. He played bishop b4. This looks very similar to the Nimzo Indian defense opening, but uh, the name of this opening is a little bit different. Any ideas what might be the opening for this? What is Black trying to play here? It's called the Ragozin, no? Yes, Ragozin. this is called Ragozin defense. Okay, so. It's very interesting, sh it's pretty sharp lines after Ragozin. So white needs to know what to do against it because uh, he's, he's trying to, to be very active, pinning the knight, and also always you have to watch out with ideas knight e4, activating the knight and putting pressure. So I have to, you know, you have, I have to be a little bit careful. So I was a little bit surprised because when I was preparing for my opponent, and we always do before the game, we search to see what opening he plays uh, and try to prepare for the game. And he never played this opening. So this, I, I didn't see any games in a database about him playing like this. So I was expecting actually the Semislav, uh, which was his main opening. But uh, he surprised me a little bit with this. So I took my time here a little bit and to figure out what to play to make sure I get a you know, reasonable position out of the opening. So. You can play bishop g5 here, or you can play some other moves, but I took. c takes d5. I just want to clarify this uh, situation in the center, so my pawn is not hanging and I don't have to worry about what kind of structure we're going to have. Basically, after this, 
take, we sort of know what type of structure is it. So I have my five pawns here, he has an extra pawn on the queen side, sort of, so it's a, called, we're going to get this calls about structure, okay? So if I go e3, c6, this leads to the, that calls about structure here. But um, I don't want to play e3, of course, here, because then I have a terrible bishop here, blocked in. So which move you supposed to do here before you lock in your bishop? Because if you lock in your bishop, then you have a passive bishop. You don't want to have passive bishop. So you need to do which move first? Bishop g5. Yes, bishop g5, activating the bishop and pinning the queen. And then I can play the move e3. Then I don't have to worry about having a passive bishop. So he played knight bd7. Uh, Ragozin is a pretty, you know, pretty popular opening. There is lots of theory. Theory is like basically there are a lot of other games played that you can find in a database and search. I don't have that much experience against it because I don't normally get to play against it too much. But uh, this was a moment for me to test something that I prepared before. The most common move, of course, is e3, but then this leads to some sharp variations after c5, for example. And uh, white is maybe a little bit better, but it's quite uh, unclear. So that's why I wanted to play something different here. So I'm going to give you a couple of options here. Please raise your hand if you, have, if you think you know the move that I played here. It's not the most obvious move. I'm trying to uh, complicate the position a little bit early to see if I can get some opening advantage here. He has this pin, which is quite annoying. Some potential threats of 94 in some point if he, if he moves my bishop away. Yes? Queen b3? Queen b3 is a possible move. It's a theoretical move. Queen b3 leads to a very sharp position after c5. Then you take, then he jumps in on a5 with the queen, and it goes on like this. Okay? a3, bishop c3. Okay? So yeah, queen b3 is possible. But there are a lot of moves here. Queen c2 is possible. Rook c1, I've played before, many different moves here, but which one is the move that I've played? Which move I played here, huh? And immediately this was an excellent idea because his reaction, he started to think for a very long time and started to play not the best moves because he was not familiar with this idea. Knight d2, of course. Knight d2 is the move that I played, which is uh, not an obvious move here. But immediately, this move creates a threat. Do you see the threat? Do you see which threat now I have? Yes? Absolutely. Let's say he's not paying attention. I simply take the pawn on d5. And now we take the queen here. Okay? He cannot take this because his queen is pinned. So that's why he cannot do it. So immediately, I have a threat. My opponent started to think here. When he spent a lot of time, I realized he doesn't know the move here. And the move here is c6. c6 protecting d5. This is what he should do. The best move in this position. But this would, have, this would lead to a type of position that I, I'm pretty comfortable. I play for a very long time. So I play e3. Then he castles. Bishop d3. I castle. Then I go queen c2 to be able to put pressure. Okay, this is what I was aiming for in this position. But since he started to think a lot and it looked, looked like he was not sure what to do, he took. Is this a good idea to take the knight? What do you think? No. Why? Who can tell me why it's not a good idea to take on c3 here? Why you think it's not a good idea to take on c3? Okay, loses the bishop pair, and also we know that the bishops are worth a little bit more, correct? August. Well, it also brings one of your pawns closer to the center. 
very good point. My pawn comes closer to the center. And remember, yeah? So now see? My pawn got a little closer now. I'm a little bit stronger in the center. And most important thing, now I've obtained the pair of the bishops. And the bishops are worth more in the opening. What is the value of the bishop in the early stages of the game? 3 and a quarter. 3 and a quarter. Remember, bishops are worth more. Okay? So that's why you have to try to appreciate your bishops. And here, I didn't even have to play the move a3, which is amazing. I actually would have wasted another move to play a3 to, to get the bishops. But actually, he just voluntarily gave me the pair of the bishops. So this is a very nice advantage now for me. Okay, Andre, you have a question? You have a question? No? Okay. So, takes. Now, he played the move c5. This is the idea he had. Now, do you see now what is he trying to do after this move? He's trying to get active here. He gave up the pair of the bishops, but he has some ideas. This is a good player. I mean, it's, it's a solid, uh, you know, strong player. What is his idea? C4, I'm not sure, because C4 will allow me to maybe play E4 and break the center, okay? So I'm not quite sure if C4 is uh, that big of a threat here. He's trying to do something else. C5 move allowed him, it opened up some doors for him to get more active here. Now, what, what uh, move now he has in addition, yes? Queen a5, your c3 pawn is a little harder to protect. Very good, very good. Now, for example, if I play the move e3, queen a5. Now, not only now he's attacking me, my bishop is becoming more ineffective here because I'm no longer pinning him. See, my bishop is not very active anymore. And this, now I have to worry about protecting this, which is not so easy. Because I use the queen, then he takes... Then he jumps in. He's getting more active now. Okay? So, immediately I took my time. This is important because I believe many players would instantly play the movie 3 here because thinking, okay, this, this cannot be the, this got to be the best move here. But if you look a little bit deeper into the position, you will realize that this queen a5 is quite annoying. And maybe you should do something to prevent that move from happening. Queen a4. Absolutely, that's the move that I played. Queen a4. I anticipate his queen a5, so I just put my queen here to control that square. And now he cannot activate his queen there anymore. And if he goes queen b6, that will fail into rook b1. Again, time, tempo. So he castled. Even though I'm a little bit behind, his pieces are not that active to be able to take advantage of the fact that I'm a little bit undeveloped. So I play the move e3, strengthening my center, and getting ready to develop my bishop. Now he plays h6, questioning my bishop here. Now what to do here? You have a couple of options, three possible moves here. Bishop takes knight, bishop drop to f4, or bishop to h4, keeping the pin. This is the moment where you have to know sort of which decision to make. When you have three different options and none of them look that bad, none of them look kind of, all of them look kind of similar to each other. But which one is the best? Which move you think normally? What's the best thing to do here in this kind of positions? I want to just drop back to h4. Uh huh. Why, why do you like bishop h4 instead of, let's say, bishop f4 or bishop f6? Um, <coughs> uh, bishop f6 um, doesn't help us too much. It helps him develop a little bit more. And, um, um, after bishop f4, I mean, although after bishop f4, we might go bishop d6 next. 
<laughs> okay. So bishop f6, we don't want to go because I mentioned to you the value of the bishop, right? It's three and a quarter, right? So we don't want to give up the bishop like that easily unless we gain something, you know, structure, we weaken the structure or something, right? So that's the, that's the idea here. Yes? Absolutely, yeah. Bishop h4, keeping the pin. When you have bishops, the advantage of having bishops is that you can pin pieces with, right? Bishop f4 is just too soft because not really doing much there, not creating any threats. Bishop d6 is just an attack. He goes rook e8. Nothing really going to happen after that. So that's why we play bishop h4 in order to keep the pin. Okay. So bishop h4 is absolutely, when you have bishops, you want to keep them to pin with, okay? Use the bishops to pin with. Remember, pin it to win it. That's the idea. When you have bishops, then you have better chances to pin opponent pieces. Now, of course, g5 is something we will welcome. Very, we will be very happy if opponent plays g5, because after this, there's going to be too many weaknesses around the king. So we will definitely welcome a move like g5 here, okay? Because it will really weaken his position. He didn't do that. He's a solid player, so play rook e8, developing. Now, another important moment in this game here. It looks like moves are kind of easy to play, but not so clear. Here I have a couple of options here. I need to develop my light score bishop, obviously, in order to castle. But I have too many options. And how to choose which one is the best here again? We have bishop to d3, we have bishop to e2, we even have a bishop b5, ultra aggressive move here. But which one is the best to play? Can you figure out out of these three options? But you also have to explain your thoughts about why you're choosing uh, one over another. Because they look pretty good, all three of them. All three of them look pretty good. Okay, let's give you a chance, Andre. What do you think is the move here? Yes, bishop b5, that's a possibility. Now, you have a pin. Uh, this move looks very aggressive in the beginning. But once you find a very strong move for black here, you realize perhaps the bishop here is going to be a little bit misplaced, you know, because we don't really want to take the knight, because then you lose your bishop advantage. This move is good unless black plays this move. If you find the correct move for black, then this move is not going to be as powerful. Let's flip the board for a second here, and imagine you are playing this position with the black pieces here. And you are pinned now. Now it's like a cross pin. One bishop is pinning this way, h4, another one on b5. So you're very active here. But there is one move here. One move here. What to do here? One move to solve these problems. Yes? I think just a simple a6 should kick the bishop out. He is trying to play simple. Do you see the threat though? He suggested a move with a very strong threat now. And the threat is take your knight. The problem you have now, you cannot take with the knight. Your rook is hanging. You take with the queen, your piece is hanging. And if you take with this, structure is damaged okay so this bishop e5 is strong unless you find the correct move here for black of course knight b6 knight b6 it's okay but after queen here you lose your pawn the rook is hanging pawn is hanging oh, okay. so you lose pawn so you need a good move here see like for blitz this would be a very good move for blitz you play this in a blitz, opponent is likely to go wrong because it's not so clear. Yes? Here? Knight, yeah. Knight. You are, you are close. You are close. His, your idea is right, but you have to make sure it's not losing anything. Yes? Correct. 
rook e6 very good and now we realize that this bishop on b5 not going to do that much because we don't really want to take here because he takes and actually we might have to do that later so you have to be careful okay so Andre you realize your idea now it's actually you know in a lot of games this would actually help you win a game but unless your opponent finds the move so I was playing a good player so I expected him to find it that's why I didn't play bishop b5 but in blitz definitely you go bishop b5 and it's likely your opponent will blunder something because rook e6 is not an easy move to five. It's not an easy move to find if you're under, you know, time pressure or something. So, so which move did I play now? We come to the moment where which move did I play here? So bishop b5 was interesting, but I didn't play that. Now, how do we choose now? We go for which move here? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> bishop d3. Uh, you have a point, bishop d3. Obviously, I was considering that move. But he played that move. But I, <laughs> uh, but I played bishop e2, because bishop d3, c4, tempos, remember? Well, you lose tempos, and chess is all about tempos, remember? See, you said something very fast, but what was your idea after this? The idea is to go to c2 and then eventually prepare, prepare e4. Okay. I, it's very concrete here, so it's very fast, you know? Very concrete here. You now blocked your queen back home. Your queen cannot get back home here. That's the problem. See? And if you go bishop b1 to play the clever queen c2 idea, unfortunately now this, this guy is a little bit trapped here. And you don't really have a threat. The knight is covering the square. You don't want to play with the rook like this, okay? Okay. So, uh, yes? Um, rook b1. Rook b1 is also a possible move to put pressure here. But here I want to develop the bishop so I can castle. Remember, step number three? So you got to get the king safety, right? So this kind of moves you play it after you get your bishop out and you castle. You cannot think about that when the king is in the middle of the board, because then your king will get caught in the middle of the uh, attack and uh, or some fireworks, so you'll be in trouble. So you go bishop e2 first, okay? Let's flip the board now, so you have it from the white's perspective here. So now he played, uh, <coughs> he spent a lot of time here, and I could see that he wasn't very comfortable in this position. So every move was like a challenge for him. Every move was like 10 minutes thing, 15 minute thing, 20 minute thing. So when an opponent does that, that means he's not very comfortable. And I can understand why, because in this position it's not easy to make moves. It's very hard to know which move is the right move here. So he plays the move c4. So he locked in. That tells us that I made the right decision, because he wants to play c4 anyway. So if he played c4 with the bishop on e2, he was definitely going to play this move when I put the bishop on d3, gaining an important tempo on my bishop. So I draw... So he played here now. What's the next move for white? Castle. Castle. Safety of the king, remember, is the number one priority. I always repeat this, you know, but it's very, very important that you castle before you try to do any kind of tactical ideas or anything. So castle. Safety of the king always comes as your number one priority, okay? Now he played the move a6. He is threatening to play b5 and attack my queen, okay? He wants to play b5, attack my queen. Now, I need to make a good move here. This is a middle game now for you, right here. After I castle, middle game. You will see, in just a couple of moves, I managed to win this game. I mean, mostly because he blundered, but still, finding the plan was important here. Now, he is threatening to play b5, attacking your queen. We know that's going to happen here. We are anticipating that. What are you supposed to do here, Mike? Rook A to B1. That way, if he plays B5, we can just take it. Mike uh, suggested Rook A, B1, but after B5, you will take, yeah? Take. Yes. Knight B6. Knight B6. But okay. Mike, Mike's got this, no? Take. Oh, <laughs> wait. And then we take the knight. You saw that, Mike? <laughs> 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 
Okay, he had that. He had that covered, guys. Okay, well, <laughs> um, the problem is he will just move his rook and do that same thing next and attack you, okay? So he will move away and attack you. Okay. Um, I gotta move my queen here. I gotta move my queen because the queen is gonna get attacked, okay? Queen is gonna get attacked, so we have to try to move somewhere, okay? So we don't get attacked, and actually if he does something, then we can attack him. So think about it. What to do here? To, to move, to make a prophylactic move here, so we can attack him after, okay? So we can attack him after now, think about it. What yes. about just queen c2? Queen c2 is a move that everybody would play. It's a standard move. Okay. But I want more, you know. Don't just play standard like most people would do. Then he plays b5, then he goes bishop b7. Well, you I know. guess I had a question on kind of like Mike's idea, but what if I played rook f to b1, then rook to b8, then queen c2, then b5, and then attack him more? Um, hmm. Okay, you have a point. So this move, you will go here. I don't know. B5, A4, yeah? Yeah, I, I agree with you, Denny, here. I agree. This, this you're better here. Because I can get my bishop out. Because I lose a pawn. I agree with you. Rook FP1, it's a bit... bit... Uh, long-term move you know locking the rook like that you know that's that's not very easy to anticipate but uh, what if he just goes b6 and bishop b7 i mean if he's just trying to just get his things over with here Bishop b7, yeah. Then bishop b7. No, bishop f3 for white now. Now? Yeah. Bishop b7. Bishop b7. Uh, maybe you can take, yeah? But, yeah, that's Just move I'm away. Saying. It's yeah. funny, he cannot take any of the pawns. <laughs> you don't see this too often. If he takes with this guy, he drops the bishop this way. He takes this way, he drops this way. <laughs> Very interesting, very interesting, yeah. See, this is what's happening. When in, you analyze the position deep enough, you find a lot of ideas that you actually didn't think of during the game. Interesting, I would put an interesting uh, symbol after this move, okay? Uh, I, I still think my move is probably more direct to the point, but rook fb1 deserves attention, okay? It's very interesting that deserves attention. Now, let's see, I'm still... Waiting for you to find my move here. Because, you know, he wants to play b5. Did you play queen b4? In, with idea of? The idea you stop and the idea if he plays b5, he'll play point queen b5. I mean, queen b4 stops his queen from going to a5 or, or becoming more active. Very good thinking. Very good thinking. Yes, queen b4. It's very important for you to learn to anticipate, okay? to anticipate opponent's ideas. So here we see he's trying to play b5. We go queen b4, we move away. So if he plays b5, we're going to get him with a4 and put pressure on it. Got it? And he has to play b5 because if he plays b6 after a4, rook fb1, and this is just weak. Okay? So he played here, b5. Absolutely, a4. When you choose a plan, you stick with it, remember? Do you guys do that? In chess, you always do that. You choose a plan, you stay with it. Now, now something, uh, you know, 
something str a little strange happened here. My opponent <laughs> made a move, after which I responded with the move and he resigned. Would you ever guess that this game will be over in one move? <laughs> it was a 16 move miniature. One of the shortest victories I had in a while. So he made a move, thinking that this is an interesting idea, he's going to get some momentum. But actually it was a pawn blunder, after which he just didn't even want to continue. No, that's too obvious. He just takes, <laughs> no, the queen b6, that's too obvious. No, he, okay, he could have just taken here and accepted that he is worse, but we're still fighting here, okay? So he didn't do that. He didn't do that, so he played the move. He played a5. He played a5, yes. Good job, August. <laughs> now. But why, why is this such a bad move here? Who can see, who can calculate deeply here and find a victorious move for white? Don't rush, think. Again, 24, 20 feet the player missed it. So it means it's a little subtle, you know? It's a little subtle, you know, that he missed it. It's a little subtle. Excellent thinking. Very good. So I took on b5. I saw the idea, you know, so I, I, I actually saw this when he played. I was like, really? Is he going to do this? I took it. But you have to calculate in the middle game. This is what tells you. Things can get quickly. Very concrete in the middle game. So here you see, I have to take now. Now he attacks me. Okay? Attacks my rook now. And now... Bishop f6, you got it, yes. Now, he takes back with the knight. Thank you very much for the rook. We're winning this. If he takes back with the queen, we take the pawn. And we take another pawn. Okay, this is going to get really serious now. Okay, okay, we will just make one defensive move here. And then start collecting the material. A5 pawn, c4 pawn, we win all his pawns. And if he takes with this, obviously we'll be very happy with grabbing the pawns here. So here, I had to calculate, of course, this variation. Now, takes rook b2, attacking this. Bishop takes. Takes, attacking the bishop. Bishop f3, knight f6. Protecting it. But okay, I can just go bishop here, push the pawn. Slowly, I will convert this into a win. No questions, okay? Slowly, we will convert this into a win. Got it? Questions? I was doing the wrong move order. I was going to take the knight first, rather than uh, after your, your queen takes. Here? At that point. Oh. Well, interesting, but Why does that not work? Uh, no, I, I, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but, uh, but I okay, I take. I mean, this is getting a little complex, no? It is. But that's why, well, why, why get into the complexity? Look at this now. Well, let's not to get this too complicated, okay? Because you know, get too complicated even for yourself. Sometimes it's not good because then you wouldn't know what to do, right? So, my problem. yeah, <laughs> don't, keep it simple, eh? keep it simple, that's my recommendation. The, the queen move first. But, but, but guys, what about this? This looks like solving the problem. Just push the bishop away and then play rook b8, no? No, And he's seeing it, see, very sharp, yes, he's seeing it. The rook, bishop g3 now controlling the b8 square. Unbelievable, yeah, it doesn't work for him. So bishop goes g3, and now b8 square is taken. If he goes to b8, just take. Bishop takes b8. 
And now, if you place bishop a6, simply go here. And then queen c2. Very comfortable. All right? So after I did this move, my opponent was not happy. So he started shaking his head, and I sensed it that he might just resign because just no hope, you know. It's a position you can play, but not really a hope. I mean, okay, resigning is a bit, bit unexpected, you know, but I really thought he might just resign, and that's what happened. After about 10 minutes of thinking, he just stopped the clock and said, I, I resign, you know. And one of the shortest wins against a you know, top opponent like this, 24-20 Fide, Fide master player, Alexander Kalekstein, his name is, from New York. Okay, this is the game against him, so I wanted to show you this, and now we will do a review, and make sure you remember the ideas of this game, okay? Opening and the middle game. Raise your hand if you remember the moves now. The first move, we start out with the first move, yes? Um, Continue. Yes? Next, raise your hands. Yes? Knight f3, correct. Yes? Many different options, he played this move. What is the name of this opening, everyone? Everyone in this room should know this opening. Uh -huh. Ragozin. Ragozin defense, okay? And now you also learned you also learned how to play against Ragozin. This was a combination of middle game and learning another opening for you. How to deal with Ragozin defense. And this is a very good way of dealing it actually. Very, very good way of dealing against Ragozin because Opponents are not going to be very familiar with it, okay? So, what's the move that I play here? To simplify the position and make sure not too many pawns are hanging. And the structure is, uh, structure is fixed, C of course. Yes? Continue now. You don't want the bishop to lock in, right? What are you going to do first? Bishop G5. Develop your bishop, remember. Develop first, okay? Now he goes here, continue. Thinking, thinking. Oh, yeah. Knight d2. Uh, explain the reason of this move. Why is this a decent move and interesting suggestion? Uh, because you're threatening to take on d5 and you're getting out of gems. Yeah, absolutely. And now immediately creating a threat of knight takes d5. Okay? Thank you for the pawn, right? That's the idea. He should play c6 here. So he didn't know the line, so he opted for something improvising. Take, take. And now this is the move. Who would have find the move that I played here? What do you think in a real game? Would you have anticipated his idea after c5? I would have considered it, but I probably yeah. still would have played e3. Yeah, very, very much it's likely that bishop e3 is the natural move. But now you know it. Now you add another idea to your knowledge, okay, here today. That not always you play the most standard moves in chess. And here the correct move is? Huh? Reasoning? Stop queen a5. Simple and clear. Stop opponent from getting activity. Activities. Castle? Now, light square bishop needs to be developed. It cannot be developed with the pawn on e2. So what are we going to do in order to achieve that? H6, questioning your bishop. Yes? Keep the pin. Keep the pin, okay? Don't let the pawn push to deflect you from there, okay? Keep the pin. When you have bishops, use your bishops to pin opponent pieces. Knights and rooks especially could get pinned. Rook e8 he went. Now we have a choice. We have three different moves here to play here. How are you going to choose which one is the best? Which is the best move to make here, huh? Huh? Of 
correct, very good. C4, he's locking it. It's locking the position. Threatening to play B5. In anticipation of B5, we play queen b4, prophylactic move now. He goes here. Raise your hands, please. If you know the move, raise your hands. So now we opponent, b5 pawn is weak, so we want to try to put pressure on, correct? And how are we going to do that? A4. Absolutely. He plays a5. Now, blunder. But even if he didn't blunder, his position is not very good, actually, because I will be creating a weakness. Of course, the blunder helped me to win quickly. But uh, yeah, he should have played something like rook b8, perhaps. He's worse, but yeah. So, or take rook a4. White is still better. So he played the move a5 and queen takes b5, August. Now he played rook b8, attack, he resigned. But if he plays rook b8, now what is the move? Queen a5. Not yet, not yet. a5 is protected by the queen. Okay? So we have to shake up the defense here. Shake up the defense. Bishop takes f6. And that will do that. That will do that. Bishop f6 will achieve that. Because now, so many ways to recapture, but he cannot do anything. All right? Okay. Uh, since we are on this topic here, I want to introduce you to a plan on a middle game, another additional idea for you to learn uh, since we are on this similar position here. So if he plays c6, we talk about it that I want everybody to understand this structure when you have versus this. This is called cow's butt structure. Okay? Remember, everybody understand? Cow's butt structure. Now, I will just make some moves. Uh, the moves are not uh, particularly important. I just want to show you the plan, okay? So you sort of get a position like this. And here, in a Cow's butt structure, if you studied uh, games from the tournament in Cow's butt, very famous tournament in Cow's butt, you can look it up. They played a lot of these plans in that tournament. I think that's why the names came, name comes from Cow's butt. What is the plan here for white? You probably have to be a d4 player to know that. Or if you studied some of the masterpieces from, you know, Kasparov, Karpov, you know, all these big champion games, you know, Petrosian, Botvinnik, you would remember this. So what is the plan here uh, for white to achieve an advantage and create weaknesses? I know this because I've been playing this opening since I was five, six years old. But uh, raise your hands if you know the plan here for white. The most popular and the thematic plan in the Carlsbad system. Yes? Uh, minority attack, a3 power, b4 power, b5. Close. Close, but your first move you have to do something else than a3. You want to play rook b1 first? Of course. OK. <laughs> Yes, the plan is you start in these positions always rook a I'll tell you why. If you play a3, right, I make a move, let's say. You play b4, correct? I play this move. Can you play b5? No, no so the move will come there eventually, but then you'll play a4 and then you'll play a4. But you understand what happened, right? You played a3 and then you played a4. Losing a tempo, everyone. And remember, Chess, it's all about tempos, OK? So that's why in a cause but structure, for you, remember, you start with rook a, b1 first, OK? Rook a, b1 first. And now opponent, for example, plays a5. He sees that you're going to play b4. He's trying to anticipate your idea with b4. What are you going to do to? Continue with the Carlsbad plan here. Uh, Carlsbad structure, sorry. The idea, again, remember this name. Structure is Carlsbad. The plan White is using, it's called minority attack. Minority attacking the majority. 
And when you finish with the attack, one way or another, black will have a weakness. If he's not careful, he can even have two weaknesses. And you will see, now he doesn't have weaknesses. But after you're done with the minority attack, he will at least have one weakness. a5 is the correct move here for black to prevent you from playing b4. How are you going to continue with the plan here? Yes? Absolutely, you play a3 now. Now he goes knight g6, for example. We go b4. Take, take. Rook c8. b5. Now, minority is completed. Minority finished against the majority now. Do you see the weakness now? Do you see the weak pawn in the, for the black in this position? Backward pawn, this is called in chess. When the pawn is not protected by another pawn and it's fixed, we call that backwards pawn, right? So that's a weak pawn right there. Very weak pawn now, and uh, this will be a clear advantage for white. So see, in this position, it looks absolutely fine for black, this position. Now, f five moves later, he's got a backward pawn and he's struggling. And the way you deal with this, you go knight a4, you control that square, make sure he cannot push the backward pawn, and then you put the rook on c1 to pile up more pressure on c6. Not to mention the idea of knight b6 here comes in. Okay? So it's a very, very strong idea here for y. I mentioned that if he's not careful, he can even have two weaknesses, remember? Let me explain to you how. Like, let's say, it's a playable move, right? Somebody takes. Now you take back with the rook. Look at this now. How many weaknesses he has? Two. He's got two weaknesses. The pawn on b7 is weak. The pawn on d5. So he has two weaknesses here. And now it will be much easier for you to win this game because of two weaknesses. So another idea here, he has to play a5. If he doesn't play, for example, does something else, you play the move before. He continues with the same idea. We play b5, another move take. Again now, how many weaknesses you see for black here? Two. It's much easier for you to win again when opponent has two weaknesses. One weakness sometimes is not enough to win. And a lot of times when opponent has one weakness, you're struggling to find a way to win. The plan is to create the second weakness. Once opponent has two weaknesses, then you will stretch his position and he won't be able to defend. So remember, one weakness, sometimes not enough. And if you cannot win with one weakness, create the second weakness. Okay? So that's the idea about minority attack. Everybody understand this structure here? Everybody know the name now? For this structure for white and black? Okay. What's the name of the structure? Carlsbad. Carlsbad structure. And what's the main plan in the Carlsbad structure for white to obtain an advantage? Minority attack. Minority attack. How do we execute the minority attack here? What is the correct move to start with here? To execute it properly. August? Prepare rook b1. Specify which rook? Rook a b1, not a3, as suggested earlier. a3 is possible, but not the most accurate move. You start out with rook a b1. You're ready to push b4 now. Create a weakness, b4, b5. So he plays a5, continue. Now he stopped you from playing b4. Now, what we need to do to prepare that? Because if you play it, yes? a3, a3 absolutely. Now, preparing to play b4, that's our plan. Knight g6, continue. Yes? b4. b4, he captures. You capture rook c8. And remember, in chess, when you choose a plan, you stick with the plan, okay? You don't change your mind and try to do something else. That's not a good idea, okay? So you go for the plan with b5. b5. If he takes this way, two weaknesses. If he goes queen d7, now, what do you do? Go ahead. 
And now, at the end of the minority attack, we see a big weakness now. Backwards pawn on c6, pawn that is weak and constantly needs protection. So after we play knight a4, rook fc1, white has a better position. So today we learn two important ideas. We learn Ragozin defense and ideas in the middle game, and we learn the middle game of the Carlsbad structure in a Queen's Gambit decline and the minority attack plan in a middle game. These are very important uh, ideas for you if you are a d4 player and if you are playing these positions for block you will know what to expect if opponent tries these ideas on you. <laughs>